Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Aries full moon at 24 degrees 35 minutes on October 17th, 2024. Welcome. I have a little announcement that the 2025 Galactic Astrology Multidimensional Energy Forecast is available now to purchase. And if you like my videos, go check it out. Hello, welcome. Welcome to this 2025 Galactic Astrology, a multidimensional energy forecast. I'm so excited to share this offering with you. We are going to spend quite some time together through multiple videos going on a deep dive with 2025 and the galactic influences that we can expect from the next year. There is a link in the description box below if you want to check it out. What you'll receive in this video are three energetic themes that I see are key to this Aries full moon from a galactic perspective. And at the end, I'll give you three questions should you want to integrate this Aries full moon energy some more. This full moon has an energy of transmutation with it. And that's transmutation of all the change that we have gone through many years, many months, many days into love. This full moon is opposite the Boots constellation and the fixed star Actress at 24 degrees of Libra. And of course, in a full moon, the sun will be conjunct Actress. We also have the full moon squaring Canis Minor Procyon at 26 degrees of Cancer. The ruler of this full moon is Mars, now in Cancer at 22 degrees, 55 minutes. Yes, there is some numerology in that number. Mars is opposite the Lyra constellation and the fixed star Sulafat at 22 degrees of Capricorn. These highlights in the sign of Cancer by the full moon square to Canis Minor Procyon at 26 degrees of Cancer Mars location here, 22 degrees of Cancer, connecting in opposition with the Lyra constellation and the fixed star Sulafat suggests that we are asked to still continue to go within, to unearth uh, our inner journey and our connection to our intuition and insights that come through us naturally that way. And we'll talk more about this T-square between the moon, sun and the moon and Mars, particularly in theme one coming up. This full moon is speaking of that we are in a process of transmutation to get more into alignment with our inner frequency, our natural soul essence. And this full moon is a prime time to take the steps necessary to come closer to that harmony, that frequency that just is singing your song within. This way, when we are connecting with our soul essence, the unique frequency that we are made of individually, we are also naturally releasing burdens that we may have experienced, burdens that we have taken on. For example, things that we have subscribed to when it comes to beliefs, let's say. For example, beliefs that we have inherited or adopted based on external suggestions that may not resonate with our unique soul essence that we truly are of. We have Many of us have struggled and used a lot of energy to hold on to beliefs and uh, habitual patterns, for example, that are working against our natural energy. We are now in the process of transmutation of those energetic burdens that are now due to be released. And this T-square that we're having between the full moon and Mars, for example, is a, a prime example of an opportunity to transmute uh, additional burdens. This energy release does not always have to be associated with going through the burden, uh, rather a sense of lightness, a sense of relief and expansion is uh, available to us at this time. 
this full moon is speaking of how freeing it can be to stay on that frequency, that beam of energy that is so aligned with our soul's expression and how we can shine from there. It's like tuning an instrument. When uh, the instrument is tuned, it plays a beautiful harmony. And this is what we're in the process of uh, at this time, at this full moon. When we tune in to our soul's essence, we become quiet within. It's a uh, peaceful interior that shows up within when we feel aligned with our natural energy. And this is also when we can receive. The energetics of receiving in receptivity is very different from struggling to hold on to something that is not aligned. In alignment with our own natural energy, we can sit down and receive, and we can also walk and taking steps in life that are feeling lighter, that are not always have to be a struggle. It's this sensation of things in life coming to us rather than we have to go get and elbow ourselves uh, in front of everybody else in the line. This is a monumental energy shift that we have available to us to work on, to realize, to experience at this time of the full moon in Aries. At this full moon, there's a prominence and highlight on the water element. And this is also suggesting to us that this alignment, this receptivity is really through our intuition. So we are asked to go within, to connect with the flow within our soul's essence that are just so harmonious. So we're invited to flow with our day, one day at a time, and seek that inner peace, that inner stillness, because that's when we can hear that inner frequency that our soul is made of. We also, in this uh, full moon, have support from both Juno and Eris, and we'll talk more about that in the theme one coming up. And as a highlight and culmination of this water element focus at this full moon, Venus is at 29 degrees of Scorpio at this time. And we'll talk more about that in Energetic Theme 2 coming up. This full moon is an invitation to let life flow through you at this time and notice the shift in energy, the transmutation of energy that is available to us naturally uh, at this full moon. Before we go into the full moon chart, I'd like to share what the energetic themes are. The first theme is ascension, growing pains. And here we're going to talk about the full moon aspects, but also the fixed star actress, Juno and Aries, but also Lyra Salafat. The second theme is flow into alignment. And here we're going to take a look at Venus and her aspects and journey, and particularly the Centaurus constellation fixed star Alpha Centauri. The third theme is deep transformational shift. And here we're going to talk about Lyra Alafar and Pluto and Mars, and also a little glimpse into the new moon in Scorpio on November 1st. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide. There is a link in the description box below. All right, so let's take a look at the full moon chart next. Here we have the full moon chart. And as you can see, we have the moon and the sun opposite each other at 24 degrees and 35 minutes in Aries and Libra, respectively. And we also can see the sun's conjunction there to boots extras at 24 degrees of Libra. Now, we also have exact to the degree dwarf planet Eris conjunct the full moon. And 
asteroid Juno conjunct the sun to the degree. So this is a big focal point. Of course, this Aries Libra axis is also the axis of the south node and the north node, as you can see there as well. So again, a very much a highlight on direction. And this time it's the self, the north node and the full moon are together in Aries. So this is a big focal point also on our Selves, our individual selves this time. Before we go into theme one, I'd like to highlight actress here on the sky map. As you can see here, the Boots constellation, and I've highlighted actress here in yellow. Uh, actress is more than a fixed star. It's a um, background energy that is present on earth to support our evolutionary journey. So this highlight of actress, fixed star, but also the constellation of boots is a significant opening to evolutionary energy. Actress is energetically associated with emotional healing. But from an integration standpoint, an evolutionary standpoint, uh, as opposed to um, Orion energy that we've talked about a lot in the past, that has to do with polarity. And actress is part of creation type of energy and healing energy from an emotional standpoint. Actress also serves as a dimensional gateway and is serving us as we incarnate death and rebirth type of energy. Actress, as part of being an undercurrent background energy on Earth at this time, also is a dimensional gateway as part of the death rebirth cycle. Actress has a evolutionary influence and the highlight of the full moon here in Aries opposite actress is an invitation to lean on a natural cycle and notice what are the natural cycles that are closing, what are the natural cycles that are opening here. Part of our human evolution is to integrate and come back to whole. So above me here is also an image of Acturian energy. So I take the opportunity to tune into this image of Acturian energy. And my fellow galactic astrologer, Aria Loomis, is the one that has created this beautiful image of Acturian energy. We have strong support at this time to move through evolutionary hurdles that we have to go through to get to the next level. Next, we're going to talk about theme one, Ascension Growing Pains. So here we have the first theme that I called Ascension Growing Pains. And yes, it's obvious that Mars here is having a key role in helping us grow. The T-square here between the full moon and Mars in Cancer is um, very much a call for going within to unearth our connection to our intuition and inner flow. Now, I want to highlight also the support, beautiful support energy here to this full moon, which is Eris and Juno. Eris is conjunct the full moon and Eris is conjunct the sun here. So let's start there. These two beautiful support archetypal energies at this time are here to give us guidance and messages on what to apply. If we start first with Aries, Aries conjunct and full moon is a sister to Mars, first of all, but also the higher octave of Pluto. So this is a highly transformational, transmutational energy that is supporting the full moon here, our inner emotional world, our intuitive world. I don't know if you can see here, but I have highlighted Eris here in her orbit just to illustrate her uniqueness. She has an elliptical orbit uh, as opposed to many other uh, planets and celestial bodies. This is a unique energy that is completely free 
from limitations. And Eris is suggesting to us to transmute our uh, burdens into love, basically, at this uh, full moon. Highlighted by the sun is Juno. Juno is the epitome of making a commitment and also a commitment to our inner harmony. In Libra, this is about inner harmony, inner balance. And Juno in Libra conjunct the sun is a highlight. It's a beacon of light, a, a direction for us to trust our commitments that we are making to ourselves. And what are our commitments to ourselves at this time? Can we make a commitment to shine? Juno is also speaking of how important it is to have meaningful connections with others. So Juno is here to highlight our commitments to ourselves, but also to others. And how are we uh, in balance with that? And those two energies, along with the moon and the sun here, are in a T-square with Mars. Mars is the ruler of this full moon, opposite Lyra Salafat there at 22 degrees of Capricorn. Also, I have highlighted Chiron here at 21 degrees of Aries, which is also a square to Mars at this time. Mars is not an orb to be conjunct with Canis Minor Procyon, but the sun and moon are in T-square with Canis Minor Procyon. And Canis Minor Procyon, I have talked about in previous videos quite a lot, Canis Minor Procyon is bringing in new spiritual technology, at least new for us. Uh, this is also the link into intuition and flow and how frequency is impacting us. And Lyra Salafat is also associated with frequency. And in Capricorn there, it's more physical. It's a, an instrument, a tool, a way to um, structure a healing, for example. But yet the effects of music, of vibration are very much highlighted here in this full moon. So here we have a grand cross focused on vibration, commitments, and being unique. This grand cross is inviting us to grow and up level into the next level of vibration uniquely for ourselves. We're all in different places on our journey, but each one of us is invited to utilize this grand cross focus energy on vibration at this full moon. And it comes with some growing pains because Chiron's square there to Mars as well is reminding us that even though we are ready, we're leaving a cycle behind and opening up a new one, it may come with some growing pains. Here we have the Lyra constellation, and I've highlighted Sulafat there in blue, and also an image of the instrument. And I highlighted uh, Lyra Sulafat here on the lyre instrument as well. As you may know, Lyra is associated with deep ancient human galactic heritage, and Lyra Sulafat specifically is associated with harmony, with music, with frequency. It's also a very protective and intuitive energy that has to do also with light language. So Mars opposite Lyra Sulfat here is the call to integrate your spiritual tools based in vibration to take those and utilize those as a bridge to your intuition. So here we have the energy signature of some growing pains to move into a higher frequency, to move into a higher vibration. And this is the time where we are reaching and taking action more so towards a higher frequency than focusing on the lower frequencies as we have scaled off a lot of the lower frequencies or are in the process of transmuting that. Using the body as technology is getting more and more emphasized, and the universe is 
a big instrument of energy that we can align with in flow, letting life flow through us and allowing the ease and the effortless to be part of our daily life. Clearly at this full moon, we are invited to get more and more into alignment to allow life to flow through us. And we're going to talk about Venus journey next in the next theme that I've called flow into alignment. So here we have the second theme that I called flow in alignment. And this theme is focusing on Venus's journey in Scorpio here. And at this full moon, Venus is culminating at 29 degrees of Scorpio conjunct Alpha Centauri and opposite the Pleiades star cluster at zero degree of Gemini and particularly the fixed star Electra. Venus is a connection point for uh, guidance is particularly from the Pleiades star cluster and Alpha Centauri is also a mastery degree and mastery energy associated with divination with advanced astrology for example so Venus is here at the highest level of Scorpio water ruled by Pluto Scorpio is ruled by Pluto so it's transformational divine feminine energy here that Venus is connecting with. And as an illustration, I'd like to show you Venus's journey prior to this point, a few days earlier than the full moon, just to illustrate how this coming into alignment and flow from that place is happening. So a few days before the full moon on October 14th, Venus will be at 26 degrees of Scorpio. So you have to think backwards a little bit here. A few days uh, prior to October 17th when the full moon is. So imagine Venus is at 26 degrees here of Scorpio opposite Perseus Algol. And this opposition is a awakening. Uranus sitting here at 26 degrees of Taurus is the awakener and the combination of Perseus Algol and Uranus is here for a long term influence on us. So on October 14th, there is some sort of coming into our sphere as far as awakening this transmutational energy that Venus will be connecting with later in the week for the full moon. And then the day after on October 15th, Venus is at 27 degrees of Scorpio. So imagine that here based on this chart. And what's at 27 degrees? Well, it's the Hydra Alphard up in Leo there at 27 degrees of Leo. And Venus is squaring Hydra Alphard on October 15th. So two days before the full moon. Hydra Alphard is associated with life force energy, kundalini energy. And in Leo there, it has to do with the heart and how we work with the heart energy. And the square there is expansion. We're asked to grow and not necessarily as comfortable always. But Venus is here to soften that connection by allowing the flow within to connect us with that life force energy at the time. And that on that same day, we also have a trine, a beautiful trine to Neptune at 27 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Pegasus sheet. So this allowance of flow within is also supported by increased sense of freedom. Pegasus sheet particularly is associated with the sense of freedom. It's associated with the winged horse and allowing that connection to the divine usher us in to grow into a sense of flow within. And lastly, we are at October 17th when Venus is hitting that 29 degree of Scorpio point, conjuncting with Alpha Centauri uh, opposite Pleiades Electra, but also 
is sextiling at 29 degree of, with Pluto here. Pluto is now direct and conjunct Lyra Aladfar. So this exact sextile is a support. Pluto is externally supporting this um, evolution within us. We're going to talk more about Lyra Aladfar uh, conjunct Pluto there in theme three coming up. Pluto now direct conjunct Lyra Aladfar at 29 degrees of Capricorn is the transformer of the physical world. In the sextile here to Venus conjunct Alpha Centauri in Scorpio, that is a transformational support to go to the depths of divine feminine energy at this time. And the guidance from Pleiades here in opposition is a constant and will be constant into 2025. Um, this is an invitation to flow with our soul essence at this time, letting go of our uh, restrictions fully to allow life to flow through us. This is significant. The guidance that we are receiving here at the full moon in Aries is a glimpse of the future. And if you want a glimpse of the future and go check out my 2025 galactic astrology forecast offering. As part of theme two here, I'd like to highlight Alpha Centauri at 29 degrees of Scorpio and its proximity to the sun. It's only four light years. And please don't quote me on these assumptions that I am sharing. Take them as approximate. But Alpha Centauri is about four light years from the sun. And if we are looking at the other players involved here, Uranus conjunction to Perseus Algol, and Algol is about 100 light years from the sun. And Neptune's conjunction to Pegasus Sheet, and Sheet is about 200 light years from the sun. And Pleiades star cluster, we count about over 400 light years away from the sun. And lastly, Pluto's conjunction to Lyra Aladfar is considered about 1,000 light years away from the sun. So if we are placing significance on the number of light years away from the sun and the planets involved in alignment with these fixed stars, we can uh, consider that Pluto's alignment to Lyra Aladfar is a significant. So as part of this theme, we are considering our journey into alignment with our soul essence. And clearly Lyra Aladfar being about thousand light years away from the sun, as opposed to Alpha Centauri, which is four light years away from the sun, it, it places also the magnitude of guidance that is coming in at this time. Now, Alpha Centauri has a personal influence on us through that alignment with Venus, while Pluto has a, a generational influence on us Pluto's alignment to Lyra Alafar, a thousand light years away, likely has an evolutionary influence to us. But it's also guiding us on the journey to awakening and evolution. Venus conjunct Alpha Centauri is a deep dive in divine feminine divination. And it's as deep as it can get in the waters because Scorpio is the third water sign that is also getting support from Pluto there at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So here we are transmuting energy to get further into alignment with our soul essence. And as we are getting in alignment with our soul essence, we are also opening the channels to guides from other dimensions, such as this Pleiades star cluster. So at this full moon, just in the last week prior to this full moon, Venus has made some significant connections to um, major evolutionary forces through Alpha Centauri, Perseus Algol, Pegasus Sheet, Lyra Aladfar, 
there is a significant call for reaching for higher dimensions, higher frequencies to uh, receive and uh, getting into alignment with flow to be able to receive. Pleiades here at the first degree of Gemini is helping us to tap into that light, airy energy that's coming in 2025 and beyond. So the last degrees of Capricorn, the last degree of Scorpio, and the first degree of Gemini is what we are getting a taste of here which is associated with Uranus shift from Taurus to Gemini in 2025. So next, we're going to take a look at theme three, a deep transformational shift. So here we have theme three that I called a deep transformational shift. And we're back here at this T-square for this full moon between the sun and the moon and Mars. And here in this theme, I'm going to show how this shift, this transformational shift is actually happening <laughs> astrologically and what galactic influences are involved. So the initial focus is on sun squaring Mars, and that involves the degrees 21 to 23 degrees where that square is in place. And that is between October 14th and October 18th, which is the day after the full moon. And then the sun moves into the later degrees of Libra. So between 27 degrees of Libra to 2 degrees of Scorpio, the sun will make a square to Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And that is functioning as the shift when the sun is directing its light from Mars to Pluto on this axis of Cancer and Capricorn. This is a significant shift because also in the process, once the sun is getting into the later degrees of Libra, the sun will conjunct the Shapley attractor at two degrees of Scorpio. And this is a major, major highlight of the sun, bringing in massive universal wisdom, highlighting multidimensional ancient wisdom that is ushering in and connecting with that square to Pluto conjunct Lyra Alatfar at 29 degrees of Capricorn. It's almost like the sun is shining his flashlight on Mars first in square there between October 14th to October 18th. And then the flashlight is shifted to Pluto October 19th to the 25th when the square between sun and Pluto are in effect. So I just want to mention that I work with an orb of about three degrees. So that uh, helps to define the days when the squares are in place. So this transformational shift is very much generated by this square between Sun conjunct Shapley Attractor and Pluto conjunct Lyra Alatfar here during this period of time. And I want to take the opportunity to mention something about Lyra Alatfar. Lyra Alatfar is part of the Lyra constellation. It's associated with music, harmony, light language, very much associated with dolphin type of energy as well. Lyra Alatfar energy is associated with courage, with yearning for peace. So during this period of time, October 19th to October 25th, there is a strong highlight on this uh, energy of yearning for peace, having courage, also a, a sense of liberation. And this is highlighted so strongly through that square between Pluto and the sun conjunct Shapley Attractor at that time. So I want to also as part of this third theme eh, of this transformational shift, give you a little preview of the new moon in Scorpio and some of the energetic signature of that new moon taking place on November 1st. And this is a significant swirl of energy. 
So this November 1st new moon may be also a energy signature of coming into alignment after major shifts. And as Mars and as Mercury are traveling forward in their cycle, they will contribute to this major aspect pattern associated with the new moon in Scorpio. So for example, Mercury is going to take the place of Venus at the new moon uh, on November 1st. Mars is going to travel into being more exactly opposite Pluto at 29 degrees of Cancer uh, there on November 1st as well. And as you notice, all of these placements that I have pointed out here are also in water, are in Earth. So this is also a sense of culmination at this new moon in Scorpio on November 1st. And we'll talk much more about this uh, in the next video coming out. Mars is the ruler of this full moon in Aries. And Pluto will be the ruler of the new moon in Scorpio next. So this axis, Cancer, Capricorn, and the culmination of energy that is uh, taking place here, but also linked together by, for example, Mercury at the next new moon and Venus here in this full moon here at 29 degrees of Scorpio is an example of the interaction and integration, transmutation of energy that we are currently in. So the rest of October here is going to be a time of transformational, transmutation of energy so that we can come closer aligned with our soul essence. And this is uh, necessarily so happening as Pluto is culminating at 29 degrees of Capricorn, but also supported by many other alignments as we go forward here uh, into the new moon in Scorpio next and beyond into 2025. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this Aries full moon energy some more? The first question is, how do you relate to frequency and vibration? What is your energetic frequency? And how do you raise your frequency? These are all questions as a result of uh, viewing this video that you may have. To make more sense of this in terms of what frequency is, we can relate to, for example, David R. Hawkins' work and his map of consciousness where he have been working a long, long time to explain human consciousness this is an invitation to start relating to frequency in relation to emotions. Emotions are feelings with an intention. And often we can gauge our frequency based on our emotional engagement in something. Our emotions allow us to notice whether we are in alignment or not. Often, if our emotions are of lower frequency, we feel the resistance, we feel the struggle. While our, if our emotions are of higher frequency, we feel liberation, we feel joy, we feel happiness. And this can be used as a gauge for how aligned we are. This has to come from within. This has to become a, a very clear instrument for us, not tuned down by burdens or struggles that we have. We are in the process of fine tuning this instrument at this full moon. The second question is, how do you extend love to yourself? And this is really in Venus's journey uh, and her association to going deep with divine feminine energy so that we can receive and letting life flow through us. So part of this is also to bridge the higher frequencies, the unseen with hands-on physical reality. So what are the tools that you can use that fit with your energy to make that bridge between higher dimensions and our physical world here? This is what forms that bridge. This is what forms that inner practice that we are invited to do at this time. The third question is, how can you trust your heart for direction 
even more at this time? How can you keep a high vibration and keeping the bigger picture as you move through the next steps on your journey? What are some of the cycles that are closing for you now? And what are some of the cycles that are opening up for you next? So, wow, this was a lot. And this was the full moon in Aries. Thank you so much for listening and viewing New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Visit me on orikasullivan.com. I have also just released the 2025 Galactic Astrology, a multidimensional energy forecast for you to enjoy and take part in. There is a link in the description box below for that offering. Thank you so much. See you soon again with the new moon in Scorpio on November 1st. Bye.